when we talk about trauma and forgiveness, <clears throat> we have to accept the fact to begin with that maybe not all traumas are created equal. Traumas that happen at particular uh, developmental points in our life are going to actually have a longer long-term effect on our life going forward because they come right at the moment crucial tectonic plates between one part of our life and another and they help form how we see ourselves going forward so for instance uh, a traumatic event at 17 for instance may really affect us but if that same event were to happen at 12 or 13 at that critical moment when our self-esteem is not completely formed it may have a more powerful effect going forward a traumatic event that happens for instance at nine or ten which is a moment when we are looking at who do we emulate in our lives going forward who are our uh, role models may affect how we see other people uh, in the future and so as we're trying to get to this level of forgiveness so that we can be at peace those traumatic events of the past that we we talked about in the last discussion talking about a complex PTSD that uh, ongoing process of being triggered by things in the present that emotionally pull us back to the past bring forward all of the emotions that were present in that moment in the past that flood us now and part of healing is that ability to begin to recognize that I am reacting to the present with my emotions of the past those emotional impacts change how I see the present and it's affecting my decision making now and it affects how much I can let go and forgive so, so for instance we may have uh, somebody that was severely hurt for instance by their father when they were 13 well when they're 40 uh, their father is either much much older or passed on or changed and at that moment though they're they're not having to forgive the father that with them being 40 they're forgiving the father when they were 13 and they were younger but as we talked about last time the real damage to all of this is is that as the the brain is trying to protect itself against pain and trauma when we're younger the way that it does that is that it begins to form uh, what we've described as the inner critic. It is the, that voice inside our head that wants to make sure that we know that the world is a dangerous place and we know that we can get hurt and we know that that comes only as we take risks going forward and so we need to be protected from pain by taking any kind of risk because it's such a scary horrible place out there and that inner critic grows stronger and more powerful as we grow older as we have other experiences that end up being painful and traumatic and it operates in such a way as to try and freeze us and prevent us from moving forward in our lives now uh, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes and talk about if some examples for instance of some of the strategies that an inner critic uses <coughs> to try and freeze us uh, and and prevent us from moving forward to avoid the pain the problem is is that it freezes us in the present and we're not able to move forward in our life and be able to make healthy choices because we're still reacting to past emotional experiences maybe one of the the most uh, common examples of how an inner critic works is through perfectionism it's important that you don't make a mistake because when you mistake you get hurt and those mistakes oftentimes are going to go back again to when we're younger and when we're younger uh, as we've talked about in other uh, settings that younger part of us when it's being hurt by people for instance is going to assume that either a I have to accept the pain that is coming my way whether that's abuse or hurt or B there's something I can do about it if I can make some changes if I can be better if I can be quieter smarter 
but I'm also going to feel guilty when it happens to me anyway. So what we end up doing is experiencing a lot of guilt for things that were out of our control when we were younger, but it was our brain's best guess about how to prevent the past. So we take responsibility and blame for things out of our control. Well, the best way to handle that is that in the future, as far as your inner critic and your brain is concerned, is to make sure that you are perfect, that you don't make mistakes. And so unfortunately, this, this sense of having to be perfect uh, is the only way that it believes that we we're not going to get hurt and and that means that we're not allowed to make mistakes as we begin to push back against that um, we're having to be able to say mistakes are just mistakes they're part of being human and if I make a mistake it doesn't part and parcel about deciding whether I'm going to be loved or whether I'm going to be hurt Another one that is closely aligned with that is black and white thinking. It's an all or nothing mentality and either I'm going to take a complete risk and probably going to be hurt or it's better to withdraw and pull back and hold off and not move forward and we very carefully hurt ourselves uh, in the process of trying to be uh, cautious and and that then pours into the next one which is guilt we have to we hold on to this sense of being guilty and being wrong uh, as a way to remind us that we're going to make mistakes and mistakes won't be tolerated and we're going to be hurt and we're going to be in pain and and guilt then is that overwhelming sense of something is coming and so often people with uh, complex PTSD talk about a sense of dread uh, that comes without an, uh, without a, something to pin it on, but just that sense of dread and depression that rolls onto us and it seemingly almost comes right out of nowhere.